Good day everyone, this is Dr. Juan Ramon Aviles Morales and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys uh, mitochondrial DNA testing and how to use it for your family tree. First, let's review where is the mitochondrial DNA found. Um, it's found inside the cell and if you look at the parts of the cell, these, these structures are called organelles. These are the components of the cell. The mitochondria is an organelle or part, a smaller part of the cell. If we were to zoom in, this is how it looks. And the mitochondria, some people may ask, why does the mitochondria have its own separate DNA? And the theory is, um, is that the mitochondria used to be a bacteria that made its way inside to the eukaryotic cell and lived there and there was a symbiotic relationship. And eventually the bacteria could not survive outside of the cell and became part of the cell. So that's how uh, the mitochondrial DNA uh, uh, is found inside the cell, separate from the nucleus. So the mitochondrial DNA is circular um, in, in a pattern uh, similar to bacteria cells. So how do we know how mitochondrial DNA is transmitted? We look at individuals who have diseases of the mitochondria. Enzymes are are lacking or some other condition. Uh, per, usually mitochondrial DNA or mitochondrial deficiencies are quite severe. So if we have a woman who has a mitochondrial um, deficiency, we notice that all her kids will have the deficiency also, would have the disease. Uh, if one of her male children were to go and marry a normal or individual who does not have the disease and they have children, none of the children will develop the disease. Why? Because mitochondrial DNA is passed on from mother to offspring. Well, uh, let's look at the companies that offer the testing. There are five of them. Um, the best hands down for mitochondrial testing is family tree DNA and that's because they offer uh, a test that takes that goes beyond what the others offer um, the test uh, is roughly about 150 bucks uh, you have to do the test separately uh, than your autosomal and and it gives you the furthest you can go in the haplogroup or subclades or the breakdowns of the haplogroups it goes as far back as possible and it gives you some insight as to um, differentiate between the other groups uh, if you look at 23andme live in dna and cri genetics they offer part of their when you do your testing general testing they include your mitochondrial um, dna haplogroup and the, for males the white chromosome haplogroup uh, they it's not as a uh, uh, detailed as the family tree DNA separate test uh, but it, it's enough so if you're just looking for general information you don't want as uh, detailed it, it should be fine now there's a way to get around using family tree DNA and that's you can use the Dante lab you could do your whole genome sequence and they provide you a separate folder for your mitochondrial DNA and you can upload that to another website called Wifeful and it pretty much gives you the same information as family tree DNA. The only drawback is that family tree DNA has an extensive uh, uh, network of individuals who, who you may match to and that might help you in the long run in developing your uh, family tree. So this is my certificate and this is how what the results show. Um, my haplogroup is A2 but if you go to the terminal subclade, you go down further down the line, I am AT152C uh, exclamation. This is my group. Okay, and then it lists the different var variations or mutations that are specific to my mitochondrial DNA that I might share with other people. This is pretty much, you don't really need to know this. This is the important stuff over here, the terminal haplogroup. If you're doing more extensive research, this would be helpful. Uh, and here is a picture from Family Tree DNA that shows the migration routes of the Native American mitochondrial groups, and they are A, B, C, and D. 
okay, and they made their way into North America, and the theory is that, that it was um, a population that crossed the Bering Strait when this two land masses were connected, and they traveled down and populated North America, South America, and the Caribbean. That's why the native populations within these areas all share generally the same uh, types of mitochondrial DNA uh, haplogroups. All right, now here's uh, where it gets important and tricky. So how can my mitochondrial DNA help me create my family tree? Okay, this is just a listing and it's blurry. I did it on purpose so I could protect the identities of my matches. Um, if you look at, these are the mitochondrial DNA matches that I had. Uh, all of them are pretty much in Puerto Rico. So that helps um, to differentiate where I might be from, that it's not from uh, a family member crossing over from, let's say, Alaska and populating in Puerto Rico. <coughs> Excuse me. So this information, if you're looking, you, you're stuck. You're not able to proceed on your family tree. Um, you're, you're trying to build your maternal line and you can't find and you need a clue. This can actually provide people who may actually be related to you. Uh, and you might be able to trace their tree and uh, get a breakthrough. So that's why it helps. And this is only available on Family Tree DNA. And here's a closer look. I blocked them out, obviously. But you can see where, where they're from. Um, uh, or the names, actually. Uh, Ana, Eva Cruz Gonzalez. That was in the 1900s. Um, they list males. I guess it's the oldest living relative, or uh, not living, excuse me, the oldest ancestor that you can trace back to. You list them here. So there's another site I mentioned earlier. It's called Wifeful. It's the competitor to Family Tree DNA. And they also go very deep, I think a little more in detail than Family Tree DNA. And uh, my haplogroup group is A2Z, uh, and you look over here is the most, re most recent common ancestor branch. If you look at it, there's a YBP, and this is the years um, before, let me go to the next slide, it's right here written down. So the subclade YBP refers to years before the present. So these individuals that match me, our ancestor came together probably 650 years ago. That's not too too far off. So these individuals, if we go back 650 years in our tree, our ancestors w were probably um, related, or the same. We had the same ancestor, rather. And if you notice, they're in Puerto Rico. And the United States, probably a Puerto Rican that migrated to the United States. And this information is pretty useful when you're going back a couple of centuries and trying to trace your tree. So I t took the liberty and published my own tree. Uh, I know it's a little blurry. I'm going to blow it up in a little bit. But I trace my mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, uh, uh, second great grandmother, third great grandmother, and fourth great grandmother. And I will introduce you to them in a moment. This is my mother, Idalia Morales uh, Rivera. Uh, she was born in 1959 in Guayama, and uh, she died three years ago. Uh, and that's pretty much the event that triggered me to go and start looking into my genealogy to preserve. Uh, my family history for my children. So this is my mom. I'm going to introduce you to her mom. This is my grandmother. Uh, this picture was taken in Patillas and this I, this uh, mountain I was told is considered sacred to the Tainos. So that's a little tidbit of information I learned from the picture. Uh, so my grandmother Andrea Rivera was born in Patillas. Patillas which is in a southern part of the island of Puerto Rico, more towards the middle. Um, uh, and she was born in 1919. 
and she died uh, in 2013. Her mother was Irene Rodriguez y Cotón. Uh, you see some spellings with two T's, one uh, and other times with just one T. Uh, she was my great grandmother and this is her certificate of death. This is her name. Uh, they sometimes change it. So she's uh, sometimes known as Irene Rodriguez Mendez or Cotón. Actually, if you look at it, um, it's supposed to be Cotón. Her mother was uh, uh, illegitimate uh, or uh, did not carry her father's name. She carried her mother's name. So that's why you see it here. But in reality, it should have been Irene Rodriguez y Cotón. Uh, so she was um, born in Patillas also, um, and she died in 1966. So, and her mother was called Sinencia Cotón Mendez. Uh, and you could see it in the document here, Irenes, this is her. Rodriguez y Mendez is the legitimate daughter of Silvano Rodriguez, that's her father, and Sinencia Mendez and they're both from Patillas and they mislabeled them as being white they were actually not white they were indigenous and that's a problem you'll notice in a lot of records from Puerto Rico that we refer to as the paper genocide where they actually wipe us out uh, and took away our heritage and relabeled us as white so uh, her mother is Maria Mendez y Dilan. This recently information came to me um, approximately one month ago. Uh, had a friend who actually is family, uh, Orlando uh, Reyes, who helped me uh, uncover this new information. So Maria Mendez, let's find where where she's listed. Es uh, Manuel y yes, here we go. So this is her uh, certificate of death uh, for Maria Mendez, and it says here that she is the legitimate daughter of Manuel Mendez and Carmen Dilan. So here we go, Carmen Maria Dilan. Now this becomes a little more tricky. Um, I think I blow it up on, on the next slide. So she was also born in the same area. And Guayama, so my family's from Guayama, Patillas area. That's where my maternal line is from. And here we go. I blew it up a little bit, and you can see here that she was a legitimate child of Pedro Dilan and Feliciana Soto, and they're both from. So they were from Patillas, that's what it's saying in Spanish. So they were from um, living towards the end in Patillas, but she was born in Guayama and she was born in 1807. Her mother, and this was a difficult document to navigate through, um, but I do blow it up. The part that I'm going to blow up is over here and it talks about who her mother is and who her father is. So Feliciana Soto y Garcia is my third great-grandmother. She was born in 1789 in Guayama, Puerto Rico. Uh, does not list her ethnicity or race. Uh, we know it's, it's uh, Native American or Taino due to my mitochondrial DNA testing. So I was able to trace my maternal line and I know for a fact they are Taino because the mitochondrial DNA demonstrates that. So I was able to hop on and trace back uh, my indigenous, one of my indigenous lines. So if we pull this up a little bit, like I mentioned, this is her name, Feliciano Soto. Uh, I didn't put Garcia, but she's daughter of the, I, it's hard to see. Uh, Antonio looks like, but I can't figure out who her father is, but her mother, you can see, is Juana Garcia. 
So Juana Garcia is my fourth great grandmother. And here she is. I don't have any documentations yet. And this is ongoing. I hopefully I could find more information and trace back. Uh, and this is the tree. And I introduced you to my maternal line. And hopefully, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. You could reach us at DainoDNA at gmail.com. You could follow, follow us on Facebook. You could follow, I hope, if you enjoyed the video, you could subscribe uh, if you haven't done so already. And I just hope this brings information um, that can help other people uh, follow their maternal line. Okay, you have a great day. Thank you for watching.